Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. <laughs> the end of the Haftarah has a phrase that might be familiar. If you were following Joshua's ascension to the absolute undisputed leadership position of the Israelites as they make their way into the promised land and have to be weaned from the manna and leave behind the generations who were associated with the Egel Hamasecha, the molten calf. They are prepared for a fresh start. It won't be easy. It won't be smooth. It won't be pretty to read about. But it is a fresh start. And when Joshua encounters a man who is often more than a man, he is given a directive. He is told, Shal na'alcha me'al raglecha, ki hamakom asher ata omed alav kodesh hu. This captain of the Holy One's host, who is now revealed as a divine being, says to Joshua, remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. Not the first time that we've heard those words in our Bible. Who was given that directive in the book of Exodus? Moses, of course. When Moses encounters the divine presence at the burning bush, that, those are exactly the words, the command that he has given. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the ground upon which you stand is holy. This is not a case of the Torah being unimaginative or repeating itself willy-nilly. There is a very obvious connection. It is to suggest that, yes, there was only one Moses, but not just Moses alone was endowed with divine directive and ability to lead the people. It's an absolutely critical reminder to us of the importance of passing the torch of leadership and how values can and should transcend whoever is at the helm. We haven't had Moses physically with us for thousands of years, but his teachings live on, and each of us in our own way is a torchbearer of Moses' teachings. And the Bible is specific in choosing those exact words to say, yes, those words were given to Moses, and there was none like Moses, but Joshua was fully endowed with the authority and the divine permission to do as Moses had done, first to humble himself, certainly, because that's key for any leader, but also to be given the exact same directive as Moses was given, in case anyone had any doubts about Joshua's right to take his place at the helm of the Israelites. At that point in history, the Tanakh tells us he was absolutely within his rights. This strikes my heart. Uh, because this week I came across a little teaching that has such a big message as we begin our Passover season. This was a teaching from the last Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, who though to anyone looking in from the outside we might have thought was Absolutely, of course, he was an ultimate traditionalist and you know, anchored in a past or maybe even lost world, and yet he was such a, a forward thinker in so many ways, really an extraordinary man. If you ever have opportunity to, uh, to read his biography, um, there are numerous, um, or to hear about his extraordinary teachings, the people that came in contact with him were changed forever. He was also a person who was endowed with definitely a divine directive and authority. And he was very forward thinking. Um, how conscious he was of that, I imagine he was very, actually. Um, the Chabad movement is extraordinary in how they have done outreach um, even to people who have never set foot in a Jewish ritual experience. Um, they make people feel at home, and it's really quite remarkable, the dynasty that he is part of and the way that um, the Chabad movement has reached worldwide to so many people to bring them to Judaism. There are apparently Chabad seders in um, all corners of the world. Uh, there were so many in Ukraine uh, prior to this terrible conflagration. Um, so many Chabad houses doing good work. So people have different experiences with Chabad. I hope um, 
most or all of them very good, but his teaching about Pesach just went right to me. Rabbi Schneerson taught that in each one of us, in this day, there is an Egypt, and there is a Pharaoh, and there is a Moses, and there is freedom in a promised land. And every point in time in our lives is an opportunity for another exodus. Egypt is a place that chains us to who we are, keeps us in bondage where we are. It constrains us from growth and change. Every single one of us has a Mitzrayim, a narrow place through which we are maybe not even moving, maybe very slowly, sometimes backsliding, but a narrow place that holds us, binds us to maybe unhealthy habits or um, destructive behaviors, constraining us from growth and change. And every one of us has inside a pharaoh. Pharaoh is that voice inside of us that mocks our attempts at escaping from that Egypt. A voice that says to us, how dare you attempt to be something today that you were not yesterday? What makes you think you could rise above your station? Why do you think you are better than you are? Don't you know who you are and don't you know what your place is? That's the voice of Pharaoh holding us in our personal Egypts. But there is also within us like Joshua was blessed to discover. I don't know if he always felt he was blessed, but nonetheless, there is a Moses inside each of us as well, a liberator, an infinite force deep within each and every one of us, an impetuous and all-powerful drive to break out from bondage, to transcend and to connect intimately with that which has no bounds, with the ultimate divine presence. Each of us has that potential in us to free ourselves from the ties that bind and hold us back. And each of us has within us a different kind of freedom and promised land. It will be different for each and every one of us, but it is there. The notion of freedom and a, a promised land, these are our achievements, which we might be able to create at any moment with anything that we do simply or not so simply, by breaking free from whoever we were the day before to be just a little bit better, a little bit brighter, to bring a little more light into the world, the light of freedom from who we were to the potential of who and what we can be. There are so many mitzvot, so many beautiful practices and potentialities waiting for us to fulfill this year. Let us defy Pharaoh, break free from our Mitzrayims, follow our inner Moses to whatever promised land we have yet to dare to imagine. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.